Well, Dr. Chitwood, thank you so very much for being uh, with me today in studio. It really is a privilege to talk to you and uh, grateful for your service uh, as our International Mission Board President. And you've been in uh, serving in that capacity for three years now. I believe it's your three-year anniversary just passed us in November. And so tell us how it's going. Well, it's going really well, and, and uh, thank you, Pastor Jack, for having me on today, and uh, so appreciate Champion Forest Church. I mean, the support that for a long, long time this church has given, and the way that support is just growing under your leadership as pastor is a tremendous blessing. Uh, things are going well at the IMB. We've uh, we've come out of uh, actually several years of financial strain. We're growing again because the generosity of Southern Baptists, like your church, uh, it just has been overwhelming this past year. In the midst of the pandemic, people wanted to do more to share help and hope around the world. They chose to do it through the IMB, and uh, we're just incredibly grateful as we see things turning. We want to be seeing more missionaries uh, sent out uh, and the reach get further to those who have yet to hear. Yeah. Well, I've been a Southern Baptist my whole life. Uh, my great-grandfather uh, built, uh, was the contractor on a small Southern Baptist church in South Mississippi that my parents came to know Christ in and my grandparents raised their family in. I love Southern Baptist uh, work. And I, I tell people that ask me oftentimes, I have the privilege of serving on the North American Mission Board with Kevin Ezell, one of your dear friends. Yeah. And I yes. tell people all the time uh, that ask me about Southern Baptist missionary causes, uh, I just talk to them about the confidence that I have in our entities right now, specifically because of leadership of people like you, Dr. Chitwood. And I just want to say from a local church standpoint, a pastor standpoint, I'm so grateful for you, the heart that you've brought to the International Mission Board. Uh, it just makes a difference. And we see it uh, just in uh, the reports that we hear at the Southern Baptist Convention every summer. And uh, we see it in the stories that are being told uh, through uh, the International Mission Board work. But let me ask you this, you know, there's a lot of people in our church and you're right, Champion Force has a history of supporting Southern Baptist causes, specifically the missionary causes of the International Mission Board. Uh, but for those that aren't familiar with uh, Southern Baptist maybe, and they're not familiar with the International Mission Board, fill us in a little bit on what the Inter International Mission Board does, what it is, uh, educate our people who may be watching this interview. No, oh, I'd love to do that. So for 176 years, literally, this work has been going on for 176 years. Uh, the IMB has been the overseas missionary sending arm of churches like your church and all the churches of the Southern Baptist Convention. Uh, so over that 176-year history, there's been about 25,000 missionaries who've gone out and lived their lives uh, among the nations. Uh, today, we have 3,635 missionaries who are serving in more than 150 countries of the world. A lot of those missionaries go out as families. We got about 2,700 kids uh, on the field who are part of our IMB family and those missionary families, and and of course these are families who've gone out from uh, from Champion Forest and from churches uh, like yours across the SBC. And so, what are they doing when they go out to serve as missionaries? They're there to uh, evangelize, to share the good news with those who have yet to hear it, uh, to make disciples. Uh, they're there planting churches. And in fact, we saw uh, this past year uh, tremendous growth in the number of, of, of new congregations that had been started, that were started uh, overseas. We've seen tens of thousands of churches uh, planted every year uh, uh, overseas. Uh, we have seen uh, a significant number of people come to faith. Uh, this past year, there were 144,000 people who made professions of faith overseas through the witness uh, of our missionaries. And in fact, there was, I mentioned those new churches. It was just over 18,000 new churches that were started uh, overseas this past year. And to think that that happened in the midst of a global pandemic, you know, a lot of churches uh, that take mission trips uh, every year and send out volunteer teams haven't been able to do much of that uh, during COVID. And we understand why, uh, but uh, we've not been left without a witness among the nations because those 3,635 missionaries live full-time overseas around the world. They're doing lots of different jobs. We have nurses and, and doctors 
Uh, we have uh, uh, business people who are out serving through the IMB, and uh, they're using that that work uh, as, as a platform. Uh, we have uh, pastors, we have students uh, who go out. There's a uh, opportunity for students to go out to college students for a semester or for a summer. Uh, young people can serve two years fully funded through what we call our journeyman program, where they go serve on an IMB team somewhere around the world and, and, and share the good news. We do a lot of work uh, among refugees. Uh, there are uh, millions of people displaced around the world. And what we have found is that there are not only physical needs that go along with that, but certainly there are spiritual needs. And there's an openness when you're meeting those physical needs uh, to people hearing about the answers that the gospel has for their spiritual needs. And so meeting people in those crises uh, of their lives gives us the opportunity to share the gospel with them. So really, there's there's not much limit in what we do. We have prison ministry overseas, orphan care uh, overseas. We have seminaries where we help train up indigenous believers, national believers, so they can go plant churches, so they, they can go uh, be cross-cultural missionaries. Uh, over the course of the 176 years that we've been doing this work, we've seen a lot of lasting fruit. In fact, there are 140 Baptist conventions and unions around the world that have resulted from this 176-year investment that Southern Baptists have made. And many of those 140 Baptist conventions and unions are our best partners, our missionaries' best partners as they're working around the world. And we're helping train them and helping them send their own missionaries cross-culturally among the nations. So the goal for the IMB is, is ultimately fulfilled in the Revelation 7-9 vision, where God let John see heaven as heaven will someday be. And John said, I looked and behold, uh, a great multitude no one can number from every nation, all people's tribes and languages standing before the throne and before the Lamb. We know that vision will come to pass for every nation and all the tribes, peoples, and languages will be represented around the throne of God. But we know that will not happen until the gospel has made it to every nation, all peoples, tribes, and languages. And that's why the IMB exists. It's an extension of the local church in getting the mission, getting the, the, the gospel message through a missionary to every nation, all peoples, tribes, and languages. I love it. And uh, just you talking about these numbers fires me up. We know that numbers represent people. And when you say 144,000 plus uh, people come to know Jesus, 18,000 churches planted. I mean, the church is going to go on long after we're gone. And we know these church planners and these leaders in these churches are making disciples who are making disciples. It's just a beautiful picture. And this is what I love about uh, partnering with the International Mission Board is that we can do more together than we can apart. And so when all these Southern Baptist churches uh, are, are pulling our resources together to support these missionaries, to support these works, uh, it's just so good to highlight uh, and emphasize uh, the kingdom work that's going on. I think that's what I love for our people to hear is that when we give, sometimes we don't know what our giving's going toward. We're giving to God through the local church, sure, but then yeah. it is maximized to the nations. And I just love hearing that. Well, it is, and it allows us to do so much more. As you use that phrase, we can do more together. So when large churches like your church and small rural churches, country churches, they give, we're all able to do more because uh, those uh, funds are, are grouped, they're pulled together. And while Champion Force can support a few missionaries, you get to be a part of supporting 3,635 missionaries. Uh, while a small church couldn't even support one, they can give a little towards the greater cause. And again, they can be a part of supporting those 3,635. Yeah. Well, tell me one or two things that you're most excited about right now as you're leading uh, the organization and uh, mobilizing missionaries around the world. What, what's one of the t one or two of the things that are that are most exciting to you in these days? Yeah, you know, one of the things is, is I referenced just a moment ago, uh, there's a greater openness to the gospel right now. You know, as, as horrible as the pandemic has been and still is in many parts of the world, uh, it, it's, it's come with a fear of death. And, and God has used that to open people's ears and hearts to the gospel. And so we've seen a greater openness, a greater response to the gospel, more people being saved, more people being baptized, more churches being planted. Uh, so the fact that, that we're still able in the midst of a pandemic to have those missionaries out there, to get the work done, to see people saved, 
I'm, I'm, I'm most excited about that. I'm also excited uh, about the fact that, that the IMB is growing again. We've been through some years of financial struggle uh, and our missionary headcount was, uh, was falling but churches are renewing their generosity and growing in that generosity. And we're seeing the opportunity to send more missionaries. And we have a, a goal, in fact, over the next five years to grow that missionary headcount by an additional 500. Uh, we're seeing the, the candidate pipeline grow. Uh, so we, we have almost a thousand people right now working their way through the appointment process uh, to go to the field. Uh, so again, a, a exciting days and we're thankful to be a part um, and, and, and uh, able to see what God is doing through the churches. Well, I know for me, the highlight of our summer meetings, wherever they're going on across the country is the commissioning service on the evenings with the IMB. And I think the entire convention uh, feels that way. We love seeing uh, where all these families come from. They say the name of their church and the area that they're going. And it is a powerful moment where we come together. And, you know, sometimes we read in the papers or see the headlines of what's going on in Baptist world. And sometimes it can discourage you, but uh, it's the missions and evangelism thrust of what we do that uh, really uh, draws us all together. And I'm telling you that unity that we all feel on uh, those commissioning services is so very uh, powerful. And and I'm just, again, want to say thank you for your leadership. And to those that are watching this interview that are members of Champion Forest, to those that may have clicked on here, you're not members of Champion Forest, we'll put the IMB's website uh, down here at the bottom of our screen. And I would love for you to go and check it out. Uh, you can see where uh, the IMB has missionaries. You can um, pray about where you would like to be involved. And you can consider going when Dr. Chitwood uh, is talking about his pipeline. Uh, we need more missionaries. And it could be uh, that God is putting on uh, a heart right now watching this interview, uh, kind of the words of Isaiah 6, here am I, send me. And if that's you and you're wondering, uh, I would really encourage you to go to this website, uh, imb.org, I believe is what it is. And uh, Dr. Chitwood, what would be the next step if somebody was interested in going? Yeah, you, you, you go to the website, imb.org, you had that right. I click on sending or send or going or go, and, and you'll get a menu. You can actually fill out a little application right there online. That doesn't commit you to doing anything. It just gives us the opportunity to get in touch with you and help you along with your pastor as you're discerning God's call on your life. And uh, am I really called to go? Where am I called to go? We'll help walk with you along with your church family through that process of discerning. And then uh, if, if you uh, sense that indeed God is calling me, then we'll begin to talk to you. Okay, here's, here's the process for going and what needs, how you can qualify, and we'll walk with you. In fact, once you fill out that application, we'll reach out to you uh, uh, personally and, and talk with you as, uh, through that process as a candidate. Uh, the, the needs are great, uh, Jared, Pastor, the needs are greater than ever before. There, there will be more people die lost around the world today than in any day that has gone before in human history. Uh, 155,473 people die lost every day around the world. Many of them don't, don't die lost because they wanna be lost. Uh, they, they die lost because they've never heard the gospel. They don't know how to be saved. How can they hear unless someone goes and preaches to them? How can they go unless they're sent? And this is what we're about at the IMB. It's what your ministry is about, your church is about. How can we get more people out there to share with those who've yet to hear? That's exactly right. And that's uh, really how this phone call got started because uh, we were able, because of the generosity of uh, our people here at Champion Forest. And I'm so grateful. You know, I've only been here a year and uh, it's been an unbelievable year. The people of Champion Forest have just rallied and given. And this year uh, we were able to uh, write over and above our regular cooperative program giving that goes to Southern Baptist causes uh, to the International. National Mission Board right at uh, $280,000. Uh, I believe it's $283,000. And I'm so grateful uh, to be able to have you on the phone and uh, to be able to tell you that in a Zoom conference like this. And I know we talked a couple of weeks ago about where these resources would go. And that's what I want you to share with the people of Champion Forest now, because I'll, we always as leadership want them to know where their giving is going. And so can you share a little bit of insight as to where these resources uh, will go? 
Well, first, it's important for uh, your people to know, for the members of the church who have so generously given uh, to know how deeply appreciative I am. I've been blown away by this generosity and, and from the first moment when you mentioned what the church was, was about to do. Uh, but it's also important for you to know that every penny of that money will be used overseas. None of that goes to my salary to, or to our support team here in the U.S., all of it is going to the mission field and, and will be a part of getting the gospel to lost people. There are a couple of projects that we're especially excited about that we've been looking for some additional funding for, and, and you're making that possible through this unique and, and very generous gift. One of those projects is helping Cuban Baptists uh, send missionaries who are going to work on IMB teams uh, around the world. It's interesting. I had an experience in Colombia uh, just a couple of years ago. My wife and I were visiting with our missionaries there, and there was a Cuban Baptist serving on uh, one of our teams at that time. Uh, we were going back to see some of the indigenous work way back in the mountains of Colombia, uh, and uh, the Cuban Baptist went with us. Uh, he was able to get us uh, to the top of a mountain through two checkpoints, one a military checkpoint, the other were FARC rebels. Uh, who were well-armed like the military, uh, but they had their own checkpoint. He got us through both of those checkpoints, uh, and we were able to make contact with an unreached and unengaged people group that he had been been, been connecting with uh, through his ministry. Uh, our uh, white American Southern Baptist missionary who was on the team with him turned to me as we were making our final uh, stop that day and said, I can't get us in here. But as a Cuban, he can get us in here. Uh, and so he's there sharing the gospel on our teams. Uh, Cuban Baptists are wanting to send more missionaries. As we all know, Cuba is a very impoverished country. It's a very difficult, hard life. But God is raising up missionaries in that country. And, and this funding is going to help some of those missionaries serve on our IMB teams and get the gospel to places that we won't be able to get it without them. Another very exciting thing that, that we're able to uh, help fund because of this generous gift is in sub-Saharan Africa. We've uh, uh, identified 55 large people groups there that uh, are not yet reached with the gospel. In fact, they're not yet even engaged with the gospel. Nobody has made it to them yet. And this funding is going to let us begin an initiative among those 55 unreached and unengaged people groups to train and equip both our IMB missionaries as well as our partners in sub-Saharan Africa the national believers who we've discipled to get the gospel to these unreached and unengaged people groups in sub-Saharan Africa. So we're incredibly thankful and excited to see what God's going to do with this. Well, I'm so grateful uh, for you, Dr. Chitwood, and just the opportunity to partner with you. And uh, we want you to know our church is praying for you, and we are 100% in your corner and behind the work of the International Mission Board. As we uh, close out uh, our time together, what is one or two things that we can be praying for? you and uh, our workers on the field, uh, what comes to your heart and mind when you're asked that question? Yeah, for our workers, uh, just pray God will give them fruit. I mean, they, they uh, we all know the sacrifices that they make. They leave kin and country, they go to a foreign context, learn a foreign language, living so far away from home. But they're there because God called them to go, and they're there joyfully. What they want to see is people respond to the good news they share. Uh, so pray that God will give fruit to their ministry. They can't save anyone. A missionary can't save anyone anymore than, than I can, or are you, Pastor Jerry, can't, but God can, and God can use that missionary as he uses you and your church and ministry. Uh, so just pray that the Lord would use them and, and give fruit that they could see people saved. For me, just pray for wisdom for me, for our leadership team. There's a lot going on in the world today, and and uh, both with, with wars and rumors of wars, uh, there, there, there are civil wars, uh, the pandemic is shutting down, you know, some countries over and over and over again. And it's just, it's, there's a lot of complicating factors for us as we're sending missionaries in and in some cases pull missionaries out and they're waiting to get back in. So just pray that God will give us wisdom that we would, that we would lead in a way that honored him and that was most effective to the work that he allows us to steward. 
Well, you got it. Uh, we will be praying for you. And uh, again, uh, I know you're going to be with us in about a year preaching on a Sunday. And about so we'll, that, yes. We're waiting for it and look forward to hosting you. And just thank you so much for uh, your leadership, your vision, and all that you're doing to get the gospel uh, to, as we talked about today, these unreached people groups, these people who have never heard the name of Jesus. We're grateful for you. Thank you so much. And we're grateful for you as well.